Hey guys, this is Wayne from WRPB and WRPB Studios. I've said it a million times over the last 25 years. My favorite topics are real estate and food. And with me is Dan Stepling. Yes, sir. From Spiros Taverna. Yep. You got it right? Yes, I'm trying to get out of the beginning so I don't screw it up later. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't screw it up later on. Okay, so it's a restaurant. Yep. What kind of food? So it's Greek food, authentic mm -hmm. Greek food. We have uh, three locations in Vero Beach, uh, Port St. Lucie and St. Lucie West out here, and uh, Palm City. Very cool. Okay. So why did you get into it? Um, to be honest with you, I've been in restaurant business my entire life. Um, you know, I, I started with other franchises, and I met Spiro years ago. Uh, he's obviously a Greek guy. Um, you know, I've been eating his food forever and when he decided to grow and he approached me, we developed a friendship and he trusted me enough to take over his, uh, his business, um, keeping the same recipes, the authentic Greek. And, uh, you know, we, we basically formed that relationship and the rest is history. You know? How long are you doing it? I've been restaurant. I've been a owner for seven years. Wow. So, uh, with Spiro, I've been three and a half years. So. Okay. So I have to ask you this. <coughs> You've been in the restaurant industry forever. Sure. Have you, what are the changes you've seen since you started to today? Oh, man. The, the, it, the amount of takeout uh, with these third parties, Uber Eats, DoorDash, has just been astronomical. It's been, when we first started, we'd be lucky to get, you know, a couple orders a week. Um, and now it's almost 25% of our business sometimes. Wow. Yeah, it's, 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 pretty, it's pretty insane. So People don't want to leave their house, I guess. They, they just want to pay for the convenience, you know? <laughs> you know, and it's funny because you are paying for that convenience. It sure, is quite, sure. quite costly Oh yeah, absolutely. when you think about it. Um, but sometimes I, I ordered from you on, mm -hmm. I don't know if it was Saturday night or Sunday night. Okay. Um, first time I ate food from your place hopefully it was good <laughs> we were talking about it out there <laughs> sure. and um i have i guess it's a chicken peter it's, it's just like a gyro except with chicken okay yeah chicken gyro okay got you and um my wife had the gyro, regular gyro mm -hmm. and it was very very good um interesting the way this one was made as compared to the way mm -hmm. i've seen it before or i've had it before sure so normally what happens is they put the chicken on the bottom mm -hmm. and the vegetables on top. Yep. You do it the other way. Yes. You do the vegetables on the bottom and the chicken on the top. Absolutely. So I found that kind of interesting. It might yep. be a stupid thing to a lot of people. It is. You know, it's funny because people, we get that a lot too. It's, uh, it really is like, you know, it's when you go, I've been to a bunch of Greek play, uh, spots, obviously, and you see it go both ways. Um, you know, we like it because it's easier to prep and then also the presentation looks nice. We feel like it looks good for the customer. Um, but you know, the way we also structure it, it doesn't fall out, you know, so if we didn't do it the way we did it, it'd fall out and then we'd have to put it on the bottom. But, um, you know, we, we feel like it just, it looks nice. I know? think one of the things, <coughs> one of the benefits was that with each bite of chicken, you had more tzatziki sauce with it because mm -hmm. yeah, for that's sure. how it was Absolutely. poured yeah. instead of just, I'm not a big, as you guys know, I'm not a big vegetable eater. So mm -hmm. um, <laughs> that's just filler for me. Otherwise, you yeah. could just fill it with all chicken and tomatoes. I'm, I'm, I'm good. Absolutely. And that's what, uh, also what, the, what I also said was the prep. When we started off, we put down the, the pea and we put on the tzatziki first. And we like to get that even spread too. You know, because a lot of times you go and bite in the euro and you'll just get like a big clump of the tzatziki, you know, and it's just not spread out evenly or falls out. So here was the one mistake. Not on your fault. Okay, let's hear it. Okay, so you're ordering online, and it's very frustrating, just so you know, okay, for me. So I order a gyro for my wife. Mm. My wife is allergic to tomatoes. Ooh. But I did not put in there Yeah. no tomatoes. Oh. My boy. fault. So it came with tomatoes. So she had to take the tomatoes out, so the yep, seeds yep, up. Yep. She, it, for her, it's not a... She's allergic, but it's not a terrible thing. What yeah. happens is she gets like, uh, not like blisters, but it, you know, yeah, it burns. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but my fault. Just saying. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want you guys to think well, the good, blame. Good thing it's not on our end. <laughs> yeah, it wasn't it's not on to get on my end. phone. <laughs> now the interesting thing is, the other mistake is I started to order with Uber Eats, mm -hmm. and it was a nightmare, and I canceled that whole order, yeah. and then I went to DoorDash, I think. Yeah. And it was much better. 
greater. I think the restaurants and the customers like them more, you know. It wasn't so. as hard to do. Yeah. The only thing that I found interesting was when I ordered from Uber Eats, I saw that you had onion rings. Yeah. When I ordered from DoorDash, I couldn't find the onion rings. You couldn't? No. Oh, then that means we got to reach out to them because thing is, is how they structure, they're called mods or modifiers. And uh, they put together your menu and then they give you the ability to go in and change a menu. But there's literally, if you counted all the delivery service and the modifiers that you have, there's thousands. It's you know, a whole it's, job. It's, it's, it's a, a job a in thousand. itself. So you trust them to do it right. right. And then, you, of course, you get someone who calls and says, hey, when I try to upgrade to a Greek salad, it should only be 250 but it's $8. And I'm like, well, that's not wrong. Let me reach out to Postmates or Uber Eats or whoever it may be. So, it's very interesting, oh, that yeah. whole scenario. It's, it's wild. For you, it must be very interesting. Oh, okay. yeah. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> What do you see in the future in changes? I know that when you started, the POS system was probably yeah. not around. Yeah, it was, well, it was new. And it was like, you know, it's, it's funny because it all progresses so fast. You know, now you have these new companies like Toast who are coming out and they're trying to take over everything. You know, they're trying to do, like, not just a POS, but really just run all of your business. They just started a, a marketing fe a, a section. And I don't know how the intricacies of that. But it's interesting that these tech companies are just becoming more involved in restaurants, you know? Say, you know, I see it with, because I deal with all kinds of businesses. Sure. I see it with law firms, yep. <coughs> with doctors. We spe we're a YouTube partner, so we're okay. a certified YouTube partner. When people come in here and we do marketing for them, it's based on YouTube and video. Yep. Um, we manage over 3 million YouTube subscribers. So um, we have an edge over everybody when it comes to video. Sure, sure, marketing. sure. But going back to the restaurant, what's your biggest seller? The biggest seller, well, the Euro is probably 20% of all sales. So, okay. I mean, that's, and that's massive. You know, it's, uh, that's, that's our huge seller. Um, you know, then we really sell a lot of just the Euro meat on the platters. Uh, what is Euro meat? So it's just a, it's basically, it's a blend of beef and lamb. So it's, predominantly lamb but uh and then it's just on a skewer that you shave off so and if you get a yero it's basically or for those who were like me in the beginning it's a gyro mm -hmm. don't it you know yeah how many sure people, it takes some time <laughs> how, takes, how, many, how many people say i'd like a gyro oh please. they want to yeah gyros is used more than euro i know? i would we, bet we always tell people remember it rhymes with spiro gyro <laughs> so it's easy so the, um and it's funny because it's in a couple of restaurants you have uh pollo Tropical? Yeah, yeah, yeah. People yeah. say polo, tropical. <laughs> oh, yeah. so, so it's like, you know, it's one of those hard sure. things. What else do you sell that's big? You know, I mean, we, we sell, a, as you saw from our menu, it's American and Greek. So we sell, I mean, you know, when it comes down to everything else, we sell a lot of lamb shanks, um, you know, just a you know lamb leg. Right. And then, um, you know, we sell a lot of burgers. We sell, you? Oh, yeah, you'd be surprised. I was going to ask you that. I love the burgers, yeah. Um, so... Because it's that's an American fare that's usually added to a menu. Mm -hmm. Because when families are ordering, yep. there's always one yep. that's difficult. Usually me. Yep. Okay. Absolutely. Well, it's funny because yeah, a lot of people who haven't tried Greek or just like any other food, um, they're gonna sit there and say, you know, uh, well, I don't like that food or I don't want to eat that. So then we give them that American option, you know, so they come out or you know something they're familiar with. Um, we sell a lot of salads. Greek salads also are you know it's our second best seller. Um, you know, and w did you try any of our, our Greek dressing? No, I was at home. I ordered my basic. Oh man, we got, I got to bring in some Greek dressing for you guys. Okay. So you guys, it's game changer. My next question is Greek food uses a lot of lemon. Yes. A lot of lemon. Okay. Which is interesting because mm -hmm. now besides being allergic to tomato, my wife is allergic to citrus. Oh boy. <laughs> so, oh boy. so she curses if you go Italian because she can't have a regular pizza. Yeah. Gotta be yep. white pizza. And yep. she curses when she goes to a Greek restaurant because yeah. there's so many things that they, she wants to Lemon taste. Lemon juice, but oh yeah, there's, we there's use lemon. it a lot. Oh, yeah. Even in um, other restaurants, they, a lot of people use lemon. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely, that's, so oh, yeah, it's that's unfortunate. Lemon, orange, grapefruit, <laughs> pineapple, she can't eat any of that. Oh, man. So, you know, it's even better if she goes drinking. She can't even get yeah. a pina colada. <laughs> that's so, funny, man. Okay, so <clears throat> the restaurant is sit down also? Yes, dine in as well, so. Okay. You said to me, we were talking actually here and out there, mm -hmm. about the delivery has become so popular. Yeah. Has it affected the dine in or... 
has it really just added to the dine-in? You know, it's it really has it. It, it, it has affected it in a, a little bit, but you know, we're really seeing this season. We've definitely seen an increase in sales, and we're also seeing just that boost in um, delivery. You know, but and I just think you know that's that number is going to keep going higher, um, and you're just as technology goes. I mean. You're looking at Amazon, who's going to start using drones soon here for their own, you know, delivery services. It's not long before that's for what we have now, you know, like for, for the uh, Uber Eats and DoorDash. You know, it's obviously years away. Right. But, you know, once that technology is there, um, and also what's exciting for restaurant owners and customers is uh, these third parties right now who are delivering are just, they're charging so much. It's expensive. And the only way the restaurants can really take that, that commission hit is by charging the customers crazy cash. Right. So we're making the same amount, if not less, they're paying way more. But what's exciting is that there's a lot of companies that are coming out now and evolving who are now just making it cheaper and more affordable for both uh, both parties. Rather than charge per order, they're charging subscription fees. So yeah, I saw that. Yeah, so they're starting to take off and they're really starting to gain some steam. So I think, you know, within the next couple of years, I think we're going to see a huge burst in that too. So if that becomes successful, um, and if these companies don't do it, someone will find a way to do it, and then we'll really start to see, you know, a, a huge, I think, explosion in you know takeout sales. Okay, so like for me, and mm -hmm. I'm sure for most of you, <coughs> it's either it's a, um, a scale of do we want the convenience of someone bringing it to us? Or do we want the convenience of not having to clean up when we're done? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I plus I like going out. It, it sure it becomes a social event to go out to dinner, and yes. not unlike oh I'm eating at home, so I'm setting up my. I might as well sit and cook in my own house. Absolutely. You it, know. It, well, that's that's so spot on, and that's the thing. You know, it's um, people have always you know they they said, are you worried about how retail is going? You see like Macy's and all these people who are struggling. You know and it's just food's completely different. You know, it's, it's, you have to eat multiple times a day and, you know, you can never replace a Sunday at a bar watching football. You know, you can't order wings to your house and duplicate that, you know, like the experience, right. you know, mm -hmm. you, um, you know, there, there's nothing like going out to somewhere and just enjoying with your family. Because it's eating. a social thing. It's com it's totally social. Okay. You know, it's completely different. Yeah. Besides feeding what we need, it becomes a social issue. Yep. All right. We're getting to the top of our time. How do people find you? What's the address? You have the address? Yeah, so well, you can go to spirostaverna.com. Um, that's the best way to find our locations. Uh, we're on the St. Lucie location is right off of uh, 95 St. Lucie West Boulevard, uh, 1738 St. Lucie West Boulevard. I'm on the south side of the street? Yes, south side. We're right next to uh, McDonald's. So okay. it's like that same plaza, mm -hmm. you know, so. You're right um, up the street from me. I'm on California. Oh, yeah? Del Rio, so you're right you're up the street. Coming for lunch or dinner today. It's all yeah, good, I, I don't even know. Yeah. Come on in. If it wasn't for Kyle bringing you on, I probably passed you a million times and not noticed. People say it all the time, and we—it's funny because you can spend as much marketing as you want, and still, it's so hard to get people to really, you know, know. So you're yeah. right, and you know, again, going back to the marketing thing, if there's no video, then because Google owns YouTube, yep. they're going to throttle your yep. website. I hear you, man. And then you're kind of getting stuck one way or the other. All right, uh, you have a phone number. Yes, so the, the store number is 772-879-4083. Okay, and it's Spiros with an S, Taverna.com? Yes, yes, Spiros Taverna.com. Everybody, Spiro, with an S, okay. Everybody, have a great day. I want to thank you for hey, coming on. Thanks for having me. We'll be right back.